Hey guys, so I got a message yesterday asking me about what was the most beginner friendly way to get started in hydroponics. What was the simplest way to do it? And this right here is that method. It was pioneered by the University of Hawaii by a specific doctor named Dr. Bernard. And he has written all sorts of information about growing plants, vegetables, herbs, anything you want to in this particular method. It requires no electricity, no special pumps no wicking action. It all is contained in this particular simple to put together thing. It'll take you less than five minutes to do it and it works great. So it's related to another video I just recently uploaded, but this one is even simpler than before. So I think anybody can do it and it will work every time. Let's get into the greenhouse and I'll show you exactly how to put it together. Now guys, when I say almost anything, there are limitations to this particular type of growing. Of course, if you're trying, going to try to grow potatoes, carrots or big root vegetables that's not going to be possible sweet potatoes it just will not work in this type of system but leafy greens herbs and things like that will grow perfectly in the system and depending on your container size you can grow quite a few things and you can even do tomatoes depending on your size that your unit that you're using size of your container is going to make it possible to even grow tomatoes cucumbers even squash so like I said before, there are limitations, but this system will work very simply. So I'll show you exactly how to put it together. So guys, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer and give you a close up of exactly how to put the system together. It's really simple, nothing complicated, and I'll just let you see exactly how it's done. So guys, this is a gallon water container that we use whenever we purchase a specialized water my wife likes to drink. And we're going to remove this handle because it's just going to be in the way. So I'm going to hope this won't make too much noise. And we're going to take this handle off so we can get our net pot in place. We take our razor blade next. Or I guess first thing we need to do is we need to make sure our net pot is going to fit in there. And so we're going to mark very carefully the top of our container. And just remembering that we need to leave a small amount of the lip so the net pot will not fall into the container. So... We're not going to cut along this line. We're going to cut just to the inside of it. And I'm going to try to do this without making a lot of noise. If it's too noisy, I'll try to cut the volume down in post-production. Okay, now we've got our net pot area where our net pot's going to go in. Now you can also use a soldering iron for this as well but I just wanted to use my razor blade. The soldering iron can put out a little bit of smell there, so I only use that in certain instances where I know I'm gonna have a little bit more air circulation. So we're gonna put our net pot and make sure it fits properly. As you can see, it's not gonna fall down in there. Even if our plan on top gets a lot larger, it's very secure. So that is the first step in setting up our most basic hydroponic system. Now, guys, depending on your net pot, you're going to have different size net pots, at least the interior area. So you can use something like aquarium gravel. You can use pea gravel, as I was demonstrating in the other pot. But you just want to make sure that the net pot will allow to, the growing medium to stay inside there. You can use some of the ceramic specifically made items for net pots. But I like just trying a little bit of gravel. I'm not doing any soil because I want to make sure that nothing gets into the water other than our nutrient solution. Now guys, I've wrapped this particular container with aluminum foil and that's because I want to prevent algae growth in there. If you can find a container that is not clear, it's opaque or very dark, a lot of different types of milk comes in the, an opaque jar, but if you want something that's going to completely keep out light from your growing solution in your water, Use aluminum foil because that will work better than just a slightly opaque container. So guys, I know there's a lot of different nutrient mixes out there, but you want to create a water-based nutrient solution and you want to follow whatever directions on whatever product. These are all granular and powder-based. You can buy some that are already pre-mixed and they're liquids. So that's one thing. I'm not going to give you the exact mixture for these products because you may be using something that's different. But the solution is what's going to directly feed your plant roots and is crucial to get the mix right to provide all the ne necessary nutrients. So just remember, whatever you're using, 
follow the directions on the labels and the exact mixtures because you're going to need it to be exactly what is listed on the packaging. So guys, you're going to want a good pH meter before adding your plants. You're going to want to test your solution and make sure the pH is exactly where it needs to be. Now I'm going to just demonstrate and putting it into a liquid and showing you how accurate these pH meters, low cost pH meters can be. So they're really something that's going to help you. If you're going to do hydroponics, you're going to need a pH meter to know exactly what your pH is in your solution. So generally your plants are going to want to be at around 5.5, 6.5, slightly acidic, but you want to go based on what that specific plant is, what their preferred pH is. With these tomatoes, it's going to be slightly acidic. So we just want to make sure our solution is exactly where it needs to be so the plants can draw in that nutrition properly. If your pH is off, then it's going to mess everything else up. So just remember, you want to do the pH testing before you even put your plants in. So let's say you're just wanting to clone a plant. You don't necessarily have to have something as large as a one gallon size water bottle. This is a, I believe this was a spaghetti sauce container and these were some dessert takeout cups. So you can just cut a hole in the top. It'll minimize moisture loss. And then I put a lot of holes in the bottom. I don't think you can see it without me spilling everything over, but I put a lot of holes in the bottom to allow the water to get to the plant and the roots to grow down through. You can cut it away once your clone plant gets big enough and it just sits in here. Of course, if it's going to get a lot of light, you want to remember to block that out with some aluminum foil. Now this will also work with seed starting. You'll need a seed starting plug and make sure that it's just barely touching the water so there'll be just a little bit of wicking action to the seed starter plug and you can start seeds just as simply in something this small, even gallon size. But that's another application for the Kratky method. Now if you're wanting to transfer some seedlings from their soil to a container like this and use a soilless method as this requires soilless is you can rinse the seedlings root system clean of soil and then move it carefully to your net pot with your gravel whatever you're growing in there clay pebbles whatever it is and then that way it can take over using the nutrient solution and it will not need soil. That's one of the hallmarks of the system is it's a soilless system. So you don't need soil. You need nutritional based water below, right below where the root system is. Now there's several things you can use as your growing medium. I'm talking here about aquarium gravel. You can use rock wool, coconut core. Uh, these are larger river stones. You know, they're, they're maybe quarter of an inch in size and that prevents them from falling through the net pot. And aquarium gravel comes in a lot of different sizes. So you don't want aquarium gravel that's really fine because it will fall into your solution and you'll lose a lot of your growing medium there. But just remember, there's a lot of different things you can use as long as it's sterile because your nutrition is coming from the water. So important thing to remember is as the water level drops and your roots grow deeper into the solution, you want an air gap there. That's going to prevent root rot. It's really important that you remember that as each time you decide to refill and renew your nutrient solution and the roots are deeper into the pot, remember, leave a little air gap there. You want the roots maybe one inch into the solution, but you want a nice gap there that will prevent root rot by allowing the roots to oxygenate themselves by not being totally submerged in water. So as your plant grows, the water level will naturally drop from the plant consuming the nutrient solution in the water. So just remember, you will need to refill that and you'll want to monitor it carefully for the nu nutrition solution based upon the pH. And you may at some point need to change out that water or add new water to it. Now, some people say don't change out the water, just allow the roots to completely drain and add a little bit of water at a time. That's completely up to you, but I think it's better to monitor and keep the water at the same level. And if you do start to have a problem with algae, then that might be a change time to change out the water. So just remember that's optional as a total water change. So guys, the Kratky method truly is a completely passive system. It only requires monitoring of the solution and it will work so well for you. You'd be surprised if you're growing it indoors, the aluminum foil may not be necessary, but grow lights will be. I'm going to put a list in the description of all the possible things that will grow well with the Kratky system and that will help you get an idea of what is the best things to try. So I am currently doing quite a bit of studying on the Kratky method because there's some alternative ways that he's listed 
and I'm just really fascinated by this. So there'll be a lot of upcoming videos that explore different methods and different ways to make this work. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If I left anything out or if you have anything else to add, please leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll like and subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you.